John Dramani Mahama, the next president of the Republic of Ghana. Visionary. Over the period of his political career, John Mahama has demonstrated his intuitive ability to plan with the future in mind. He is a generational thinker and a positive-minded policymaker. Peaceful and tolerant, John Mahama's character has always been known as one of self-control, of a peaceful nature, and has truly worked in the footsteps of the late John Evans Atamils. His ability to calm waters, keep relationships, and manage delicate national issues is unrivaled. Resilient. There are countless examples of situations where John Mahama stood his ground on unpopular but necessary policies for the sake of the future of the country. He is tough beyond measure and has stood the test of time and yet ready for more. Communicator. Mahama's eloquence and communication skills transcend the upper class of society. His message also sinks deep among the grassroots as well as the rural folk of our dear nation. Unifier. John Mahama is an all-round team player and a group builder. The makeup of his ministerial and public office appointments cuts across ethnic, cultural, social, ideological, and even political divides. Gender Equalizer. Mahama's first turn saw one of the closest bridges in the gender equality gap. He is a strong believer in competence over gender and a supporter of women in high office and public positions. Religious. Mahama is a Christian by faith and a member of the Wing Bay Assemblies of God Church and associated with the Men's Fellowship Wing. He is committed to God's Word and teaches it among his peers and fellowship members. Success Driven. One of John Mahama's major traits is his determination to see a project through. He is meticulous by nature and pays extra attention to detail. Legacy. A chunk of Mahama's achievements are literally visible for all to see and can be identified in all major sectors. Housing. Health. Education. Power. Transport. Among many others. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing John Dramani Mahama. Oh, 
powerful and moving song and uh, it inspires me to do God's work and rescue this nation. <laughs> Members of the Council of Elders of our great party, the National Chairman, General Secretary, and all members of the National Executive Committee, the Honorable Minority Leader, our former Speaker of Parliament, our great regional chairman, all assembled here, chairman, chairman of our National Campaign Committee, um, my friend and brother, Joshua Labi, who is responsible for a lot of the wonderful work you see on this campus. Well done. And most of all, my capable and elegant Professor Jane, Nana Jane Opokwa Jibang. All our party supporters across the length and breadth of our country watching this program, and indeed all our citizens and compatriots who are in your homes or wherever you are watching us. I say good evening and may God richly bless you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for making time to join us from all over our beautiful country and across the world. Today, the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, is taking the country Ghana on yet another positive and progressive journey. Two weeks ago, in compliance with the constitution of the NDC, I announced to the Council of Elders and the National Executive Committee my choice of Professor Nana Jane Opokwa Jiman as running mate for the December 2020 presidential elections. I wish to thank our founder, President Jerry John Rawlings, his Deputy Chair of the Council of Elders, Elijah Mahama Idrisu, and indeed all members of the Council of Elders, and also the National Executive Committee, for the unanimous endorsement they gave to my choice. <laughs> With Professor Nana Jenopokwa Jivan, I can say confidently that we have made the best choice for Ghana. I have, partnering with me by the grace of God, a vice presidential aspirant who complements and will ensure that we present to the people of Ghana a winning ticket, a very experienced ticket, and indeed a most competent ticket. Today's momentous occasion is not only for our great party, the NDC, it is also for every single Ghanaian who cares about Ghana and is interested in seeing our nation reach the optimal level of progress, shared opportunities, and prosperity that we are capable of attaining. Professor Opokwa Jiman is the first female to be selected by one of the two major political parties 
that have won all elections in our country since the advent of the Fourth Republic in 1992. Indeed, the NDC remains the most successful political party in the history of Ghana. We have won four out of the seven presidential elections since the advent of the Fourth Republic. With the support of the Ghanaian people and by the grace of God, we will win our fifth election in December 2020. <laughs> to bring development to all our citizens in every corner of Ghana and to advance social justice. The choice of Professor Pukwa Jimang is over and above affirmative action because she is more than qualified to serve as vice president of this country. She's a woman who has contributed to shattering the many glass ceilings that have held women down for generations by becoming the first female to lead and manage a public university in Ghana. As I described her in my statement following the announcement I made, she's God-fearing, a distinguished scholar, a conscientious public servant, and a role model. The NDC has a lot to show when it comes to putting women at the forefront of leadership. Women constitute about 50% of Ghana's population, and women form the majority of Ghana's workforce. They must lead in order to advance our nation's progress. And we've been vindicated at every turn by the sterling output of these female high flyers. It was the NDC that presented Ghana's first female Speaker of Parliament, the first female Foreign Minister, the first female Attorney General, the first female chairperson of the Electoral Commission, the first female chairperson of the National Commission for Civic Education, and the first female chairperson of the Council of State, and indeed many others. There are a host of other key positions where our women have distinguished themselves and elevated the name and image of Ghana by their first-rate performance. Unlike the MPP, we in the NDC recognize and appreciate the knowledge, industry, passion, creativity, and problem-solving skills of our women. With Professor Opokwa Jiman, the NDC has once again stayed our true course and advanced a step further in our established philosophy of inclusivity by boldly presenting one of our best in intellect and character as our party's running mate. Together with Nana Jane, we will work with you, each and every Ghanaian, to place our country back on the track of progress and opportunities for all and shared prosperity. This, we will build on the foundation of social justice self-belief, unity, integrity, transparency, and accountability. <laughs> Working together with Nana Jane, a brilliant and accomplished woman, woman, I have no doubt that God's grace will shine on us in the elections of December 2020. <laughs> I'm convinced that with her zeal for service, and her unquestionable integrity, she will greatly impact the developmental focus of our activities as a party and when we come into government. She has already begun her policy briefings sessions as incoming vice president, ready and willing to work hard for Ghanaians. <laughs> Nana's impeccable record is endless, and her reach across various sectors is overwhelmingly impressive. For example, I was glad when one of her sterling contributions to academia and healthcare as my Minister for Education 
was announced to have sequenced the genome of the virus which causes coronavirus disease. And I'm referring to the establishment of the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens. Many people do not know that she led the creation of that institution. <laughs> Leading the transformation of our educational sector as our Minister for Education, my running mate supervised the achievement of many feats that make me proud to be working with her. She converted polytechnics into fully-fledged technical universities. And she supervised the upgrading of the colleges of education into tertiary institutions and led the negotiations that secured the World Bank funding for the flagship secondary education improvement program, SAFE, that says that saw the major upgrading of facilities in senior high schools and the construction of 23 community day senior high schools. For most of you who remember that facility, it had to do, you remember in parliament it was called the, was it Tampax facility or Pampas, Pampas facility, because it involved giving women what they needed for their monthly, giving the student girls what they needed for their monthly um, something. And uh, <laughs> our colleagues on the other side didn't understand it, but it was a very good intervention. Furthermore, facilities in 50 less endowed senior high schools and 75 underperforming senior high schools were upgraded under this facility. Working with the educational unions and other educational authorities, teacher absenteeism was reduced during her tenure from 27% to 7%. <laughs> NANA also improved the quality of basic education, which resulted in Ghana's all-time best BECE performance. She introduced the private BECE and recruited 2,400 mathematics and science teachers as a special intervention to improve teaching and learning of mathematics and science at the senior secondary school level. She also achieved Ghana's overall best performing West African Secondary School Certificate Examination National Award by WAEC for four consecutive years when she was Minister of Education. During the period of her tenure at the Ministry of Education, she engaged more than 40,000 newly recruited teachers. 40,000 newly recruited teachers. During the four years she served as Minister of Education. You can check the Ministry of Education website, and it is there. As you all recall, we abolished the quota system at the Colleges of Education leading to an increase in enrollment from just 9,000 students to 15,400 st students and created more teaching opportunities for our youth. It was under Professor Pokwa Jimang that teachers were automatically posted without national service and licensure examinations. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, Having worked closely with Nana, what I salute about her, and the world acknowledges and equally celebrates as true, is the fact that she's an achiever of unquestionable integrity. She's a resourceful and results-driven results leader. It is regrettable that following my announcement of her as my running mate, several key leaders of the MPP administration and party launched a barrage of misogynistic attacks at her, just on the basis of her gender. These attacks are unacceptable and most unfortunate. And this is not what the severely distressed people of Ghana deserve at this time. We surely can do better. 
Our politics has evolved into one of insults, intimidation, and unfortunately, in many cases, has become increasingly violent. This is anathema to the sustainability of the health and wealth of our republic, bought for, fought for, and won through the blood and toil of our forefathers. As seven leaders, we pledge to abide by the ethics of a clean campaign, devoid of insults, we shall present our message to the people of Ghana in a clear and succinct manner. We also pledge that our promises will be a sacred social contract that will be honored and not betrayed. This pledge is to all including our compatriots who have lost interest, faith, and hope in our politics. We will change the face of our politics so that no one will be considered less Ghanaian or more Ghanaian than the other. <laughs> On the basis of our ownership of a political party card, let's face it, there are many Ghanaians who do not belong to the NPP, the NDC, or any known political party. They detest the persistent acrimony associated with our politics. They do not possess a party card, and yet, day in and day out, they contribute significantly to building our country. Today, we are witnessing a course of action never seen in our country. And so my message to them is there is hope for us. Indeed, the selection of Professor Opoku Ajiman as our running mate is a demonstration of the many bold and progressive changes the next NDC administration that I will lead, inshallah, will embark upon. The involvement of women in the decision-making process will not end at the level of the vice presidency. We will work again towards the attainment of a minimum of 30% of all appointments going to women. We have an opportunity in this election as Ghanaians to fully give meaning to gender equality and also to have a highly educated and disciplined woman placed in a critical position to influence policy and shape our nation's destiny. We will implement a set of robust health policies and plans aimed at aggressively tackling and reducing maternal mortality by half from the current 319 per 100,000 life births. We shall ensure female social, social economic improvement. We shall enact the spousal rights law, establish exclusive and secured shelters for abused women and children, and provide opportunities for all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as a Social Democratic Party, we seek to harness the best qualities in all our people to transform the destiny of our nation. And in that direction, and as the fulcrum around which our health policy will evolve, we will, before the end of 2021, introduce and begin the implementation of a free primary health care plan. This will make the provision of primary health care to all Ghanaians, young and elderly, free. Our free health care plan will guarantee a healthy people and provide a healthy workforce needed to accelerate our development. My brothers and sisters, the 2020 elections will be a referendum on the four years of the Nana Akufuado presidency. Four years of nepotism, four years of corruption, 
four years of stagnation, four years of deliberately abandoning of badly needed social and economic infrastructure, four years of dehumanization, four years of disenfranchising Ghanaians, four years of stripping Ghanaians of their citizenship, four years of deliberate collapse of indigenous Ghanaian businesses, four years of massive job losses, four years of economic hardship. This will be a referendum on the term of a president who has no real solutions for Ghana. A president who is hell-bent on doing whatever it takes to stay in power, including against sound advice, replacing the very voters register which brought him into office. <clears throat> My heart goes out to the many who have been affected by this government's unjustifiable collapse of Ghanaian-owned financial institutions. It is heart-wrenching to hear government officials justify the huge amount it is spending to manage the impact of the collapse of Ghanaian financial institutions, which they now put at a whopping 21 billion Ghana cities. I weep for the many who have lost their jobs, the many who have lost their jobs, the many who have lost their businesses, and the many who have lost their livelihoods as a result of these policies. I pledge on behalf of the NDC that we shall, within one year, of being in office, pay all funds that have been locked up with the collapsed financial institutions. <laughs> Within our first year in office, we shall pay to all the beneficiaries all funds locked up in the collapsed financial institutions. It is a promise. We shall not put together any long-term payment plan that will further worsen the living conditions of the victims. As has been introduced in other economies, the next NDC administration will establish a financial services authority that will be responsible for ensuring that consumer financial markets work for consumers and providers and for the economy as a whole. This Financial Services Authority will oversee all financial products and services that are offered to consumers and will effectively and efficiently prevent and stop the challenges that have confronted uh, customers of Men's Gold, DKM, and others. We will restore Ghanaian indigenous investment in the banking and financial sector. And we will do this through a tiered banking structure in order to restore viable credit sources for Ghanaian SMEs. And we will make amends for those whose businesses were collapsed due to political victimization. We will send all contractors with valid contracts who have been sitting at home for four years without being paid for legitimate work done for government back to site. And we will make immediate arrangements to pay them their hard-earned monies deliberately withheld by the Nanado administration due to politics. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, weak infrastructure does not propel growth and improvement in the quality of the lives of people. And this is precisely why my presidency took aggressive steps to develop and consolidate our healthcare infrastructure, our educational infrastructure, our transport infrastructure, and our digital infrastructure, 
This is how to build a resilient nation. Without creating and consolidating a developed infrastructure, no nation, no nation, and I say, can resist the global shocks that come from time to time. Just imagine for a second how Ghana would have been without the investment of Ghana Medical Center. Without the Ghana East District Hospital, as the number of COVID-19 cases keep rising in our country. The speed of building and consolidating our infrastructure has slowed down because the current government is largely ignoring the infrastructural buffers that are needed to build resilience in the face of external shocks. The NDC believes in Ghana's future and will address the issues that affect you, each and every one of us. We'll build a peaceful, secure, and strong economy that provides sustainable jobs through a transformed, industrialized, and digital economy. We'll reinforce the independence of state institutions, such as the Electoral Commission, such as the Auditor General's Department, such as IOKO, and the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice. Single source procurement, popularly called sole sourcing, will be the exception rather than the rule. In pursuance of social justice, I will vigorously push through a constitutional review that creates a fairer and just emolument system and removes the distortions between Article 71 office holders and other public sector employees. We will, as part of an Integrity for Development Action Plan, launch what I call Operation Sting. Operation Sting will be an anti-corruption crusade which under my watch will involve massive, far-reaching and practical government reform. It will be a ruthless system that fights against all corrupt political appointees and public sector workers. It will be a requirement for all who serve in my government to publish their assets declarations and have the same audited by the Auditor General. Of course, the elephantine size of government consisting of 125 ministers or more we have been burdened with over these last four years will be reduced drastically. And the savings that we will make from the emoluments of these reduced number of ministers and the privileges that they enjoy will be channeled towards rewarding assembly members to perform the function <laughs> will be channeled towards paying assembly members to perform the function of collecting accurate birth and death information in their various electoral areas. And I'm sure this will give better meaning that will satisfy our Supreme Court about the value of our birth certificates. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, tonight is for my running mate and my vice presidential candidate. I'll save the rest for my policy dialogue sessions, which I'll be starting soon, and the launch of our manifesto in August next month, during which we'll discuss and debate the NDC solutions and plans for our country. Our plans will include an aggressive job and entrepreneurial program in the public and private sectors that will deliver a minimum of 250,000 jobs every year. And a total of more than a million jobs across the country by the end of my term in office in 2024. We will put Ghanaians back to work to earn a decent living. Congratulations. Professor Nana Jinopokwa Jiman, 
the first female vice chancellor of a public university in Ghana, on your selection and acceptance to be our party's running mate. Together, we have made the best choice for Ghana. Together, we'll work for the women of Ghana, we'll work for the youth of Ghana, we'll work for the people of Ghana. I assure you, you have my fullest and unalloyed support. You have the fullest support of the NDC and the support of millions of Ghanaians, including young people who you have either directly trained in your long career as an educationist of repute, or those who you have inspired by your stellar achievements. We cannot fail them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to the good people of Ghana, Professor Nana Jinopokwa Jiman, by the grace of God and the will of the Ghanaian people, the next Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Thank you, and God richly bless you.